Hey everyone, Yoroshien here, and today I'm going to be doing my first ever breakdown video of how to be an adventurer. Really, this is just how how to be an adventurer is made, at least for episode 10. And today I'm just going to go over some of the really quick things. And then also I have Ethan and Quiz who are going to talk about their parts of the editing process when it came to making how to be an adventurer. Now, keep in mind, this is in no way a tutorial video. This is just to show you a lot of the problems that went into it. Also, a lot of the solutions that went into it, as well as some of the fun facts that really made how to be the adventurer 10 how to be an adventurer 10. Now keep in mind, this is also a showcase of why it takes so long in order to produce these kinds of episodes and why having other editors as well as people that I can explicitly hire in order to help me edit is so important. And also, this is something that I'm going to be showing to the patrons first before it goes on to the YouTube. So if you guys are a little interested in that, then by all means, just know that this might not be a common occurrence, but I do want to just show off what is being done here because I absolutely loved working on this project, but also there was just so much that had to be done. That's a foot and a half, motherfucker! So first off, uh, I was the one that had edited the entirety of the cold open. I'll talk a bit about that in a second. So right now, I'm just going to take a quick deep breath as there was a lot of things that kind of just happened that I can kind of skim over and not talk too much about. So here we go. <sighs> Tracking shot with Welf here. Implant and tracking shot with Lily here. Implant. Implant. How to implant Lily's face here. I had to slightly change Belle's face and then also subsequently implant his lip flaps here. Tracking lip flaps shot here with Welf again. I had to implant Lily's lip flaps. Actually, I had to create them in Photoshop. I also had to implant Belle's lip flaps here. This was a redraw by Runaway Tourist. Redrawn new lip flaps by Hirono here technically had to implant lip flaps here it was for a later part of this but i still had to implant that implant lily lip flaps here and also subsequently i had to track in wealth's lip flap here so that way it would also follow along with him uh tracking and also just a bunch of other little bits so that is as far as i can tell you for what i did video editing wise when it came to lip flaps however the bigger portion of this video is done by me at least 35% of this video is just me laying out the entirety of what goes on so that way I can match it up with the audio. To which, oh, by the way. Hey everyone, this is Quiz Guru. I worked on scenes one, three, and four. First off, just to give you an idea on how me and Yaro usually do this, he starts by giving me this framework here. This is basically the shots he wants me to use, not lip flapped at all, usually missing a ton of visual edits. I take this framework and do a bunch of the editing. So there's not a whole lot going on in scene one. This first lip flap of Hestia is transposed. The shot of Bell had no dialogue so I drew a small, fairly simplistic mouth for lip flaps. Here, Lily was talking, so I covered that with a closed mouth, but then I took those mouth frames and used them for this next shot instead. For this shot of Welf talking, I actually had to use two different shots. This first part is the actual mouth from a different shot entirely, and the second part is just the lower lip from the original shot. For Hestia talking, obviously she's moving while she talks, and that's always a pain to deal with. And because she's moving, the audience has a tendency to not really notice how well it's synced. So there's some room for error here if you need to be quick about it. For this shot of Hestia talking, she was zooming in, so I lip flapped a still shot and added a zoom after. I lined it up to look the same by overlaying it with the original shot. All the lip flaps in this shot are transposed and resynced as the shot is panning. Because the panning is at a consistent speed, I was able to apply a motion effect to the lip flaps using just the first and last frame of the pan and still have it line up correctly. Here, Belle's lip flaps are transposed. For Daphne's line here, because it's a short panning shot, I found a way to kind of line up the lip flaps without thinking too much about it. What I did was basically go in you do the mask make the mask really really big and then as you go throughout the line just make sure that you're frame by frame lining it up you have a wide variety of reference points to use for this shot because you're using a bigger mask and then when you're done you go back in you just shorten the mask and now since the mask is only covering the mouth any slight discrepancies aren't really shown for Cassandra's line here, I actually used a mouth from her previous shot. And then for Belle talking here, I did the same thing as before, where I lip flapped it on its own and then did the zoom effect after. Immediately, this first shot of Hermes talking is just kind of all over the place with editing, because he comes in from the side while talking, and he wasn't talking, so I had to actually grab that mouth from something else. For this shot of Hestia eating, the original shot was just a simple... 
However, I felt like the shape of her mouth didn't really match the sound she was making, so I went in and slightly altered it to make it look better. These lip flaps are motion tracked, and then I actually used her mouth to make Hermes lip flaps, because Hermes was not talking. Uh, it is a common trend that people will talk when they're not talking, as I found later, as you will find soon. This lip flap from Belle was transposed from here. However, to go from this tiny mouth to this bigger mouth, I ended up using a, a few in-between mouths to make it grow, as well as when it goes back down. Not that anyone would have noticed, but I added one shot where her mouth is open at just before she starts talking, because it looked a little unnatural to me otherwise. But again... And to you. Doubt anyone would see that, or have noticed if I hadn't pointed it out. Like now? Oh, that was fun to lip flap. Uh, actually, it really wasn't that hard. If you look at the timeline, I only used five frames. Rather, I only had to alter five frames. The rest was just kind of already okay. And that basically amounted to masking the appropriate mouth and then lining it up. I'm going to put this out in the open. There's a lot of points where Eyes just does not talk and I need her to talk. So you're going to see a lot of this shot being used because it is one of the few places where I was able to find her talking. For this first line of hers, I had to manually track her lip flaps. For this shot, again, it's the same lip flap. What is her name? Uh, Fenrir? No. Fenrir? No. Her name can't be Fenrir. Fenrir is not on here. Oh, I spelled eyes wrong. <laughs> Loki. You are Loki. For this shot of Loki, originally she had her mouth smiling, and I went in and changed it to a frown because the previous line had her say something rather rude. This shot of her frowning is actually from this previous shot. Nothing overly complicated going on with the lip flaps here. I just want to point out that I opted to only use the head bobbing motion when they were yelling for this part. Otherwise, it looks a little odd. In this shot of Loki, I masked her mouth clenching. And also for Belle, it's a custom mouth from another shot. Because otherwise, he has this dorky smile on his face. And would you believe, still the same shot. For this exchange between Belle and Eyes, I used Belle's lip flaps from this shot for actually both of them. And then at the end for Belle... Eyes, uh... Not in front of people. I shrank his mouth to match his mumbling. I had to track the lip flaps for this shot. Did one of my favorite tricks again, where I zoomed after the fact, and these are actually from a completely different shot. They had to undergo some brightness effects. And now we come to my least favorite sequence of lip flaps. Hermes is, uh, was quite a pain. So he is getting closer as the shot is moving away and also moving to the side. Very big pain, because not only did I have to find the right lip flaps to use, I also had to make them bigger as the shot went on, and of course I had to track them so that they lined up properly. And here we go again, he's talking while walking, and also moving down, and then I transposed his lip flaps for this part. For this shot of Bell talking, I used lip flaps from this shot, including the closed mouth, because his original closed mouth was... Well, not closed at all. And it just does not look natural when you go from an O mouth to a wide mouth. For this shot of Bell when he talks while he turns, I used these lip flaps again. And then at the end of this line, I went from his regular closed mouth to an M mm sounding mouth because that was the sound he was making. Mm. For this sequence of Hermes and Bell talking, they're panning down and I had to track that, but it honestly wasn't that bad because they're so far away you can barely notice how well they're lined up or not. These lip flaps of Hermes were transplanted. And I cropped Bell so that I could move him independently. To be honest, this exchange between Bell and Hermes on the bench here is kind of my favorite scene. Uh, it was also the easiest to lip flap. There's nothing really complicated going on. I just used the actual shot slip flaps. It's the easiest thing I could have possibly edited. That's not why it's my favorite. I just legitimately like the way it was written. These lip flaps for Hermes were transplanted slightly, as were these, and these for Bell. These for Hermes, and of course these as we pan down while he talks, and god Damn, I hate it when they pan. But yeah, these are very, very slightly transplanted. From this part here, you can see this was a bitch to edit, but it's totally worth it. Their chemistry is amazing. Most of Hermes' love flaps are actually from this shot here, and Bell's are actually from this shot, but had to be slightly moved. Then at the end, Bell's lip flaps were from actually a different shot. All right, cool. We have panning away and moving to the side. And thank God that that couple just kind of came on screen because that would have been a nightmare to edit otherwise. But yeah, these mouth frames are from Bell, actually. Because <laughs> um, again, Eyes does not talk that much. Eyes' lip flaps here had to be slightly moved. Now, you might not notice this at first glance, but when Bell does his little sniff here... 
I actually have it transitioning from this short mouth to this longer mouth. These lip flaps are from later in the shot. Same ones that I could use for eyes talking here. I had to slightly move his mouth for this. And then at the end of scene three, we have that shot that I just loved to use because eyes normally does not talk, which means, of course, that there was nothing to do for this shot at all, except for the slight turn. Oh, I also had to add a lighting effect on her mouth here because she was, for some reason, talking while it was glowing. Okay, with scene three out of the way, we get to scene four, which is <laughs> the worst scene. Let's get going. Ladies and gentlemen, the name of the game is Horrible Faces. Horrible Faces that don't lip flap well, Apollo. In the official version, this actually had a face edit, so all my work here was just kind of pointless. <laughs> Sucks, because the mouth I used was actually from a completely different shot here. Bell talking here is from this shot, with a brightness effect. This shot required a slight transplant. This shot required a transplant. This shot was so hard to transplant that I actually had to add a custom color mat to cover the rest of his face. For this shot of the injured kid, that is the name I decided to give him. As you can see here, injured kid skin. I don't care about his name. I don't think he comes up that much. Uh, I actually had to color in his face a little bit so that... I could do his lip flaps because otherwise you end up with this open mouth behind everything that is just too big. For this shot of Apollo talking, I actually, <laughs> as you can see, did a few things. Because I couldn't just get a mouth from a different shot. I had to recreate all the interesting features of his wonderfully fucking stupid face. I have no idea how good this ended up looking, but I used... <laughs> I ended up using this weird mouth for whenever Belle made a woo sound. What the fuck is wrong with your face? And then for the rest of his lip flaps, they're actually from this shot over here. Actually, they're not just from that shot. I actually had to do a bit of uh, fancy work where I didn't cut the whole mouth. I cut out a shape of the mouth because I needed it to to like well i needed it to look right these lip flaps are hestia are slightly transposed for the shot of hestia talking i actually flipped her mouth because i wanted her to frown I actually used the same mouth for bell now we get to this shot of the injured kid talking again everything hurts oh believe me i know your pain so initially all i had was this shot of him shaking with his mouth open no lip flaps whatsoever and his mouth is absurdly huge covering most of the available space on his face so what would a professional editor do in this situation the first thing you should do is complain to the person who has put you in this situation you know cut loose just let yourself vent for a bit then once you're done asserting your dominance start by just coloring over his face because that face just needs to go it's not a good mouth at all we don't need it after that you can take a mouth from a different shot say bell bell has a perfect looking ugly face here for pain it's even the right color actually <laughs> Do your lip flaps and then just to make it look extra nice, just apply a nice little pan, very slight pan down. You ever want to make a shot look extra dynamic? Just use a little bit of panning or zooming. Make it look cinematic. For this shot of eyes talking, we use just my favorite shot of eyes talking. The lip flaps for Hestia here are transposed. This shot, which is essentially just staring at Apollo, was originally a talking shot of Apollo. So I just took a simple shot of him with his mouth closed and did a zoom pan. This shot of Hestia talking sucked because it panned while it moved, but it's ultimately just th these lip flaps but synced up properly. I've shown you a bunch of these already. Got a panning shot of Apollo talking that was originally not panning at all. I just wanted to add the pan. I just felt like it. This shot did have a panning zoom effect, but I felt like it wasn't really grandiose enough given what he was doing, so I kind of added more to it. In this shot, some of the characters were talking. I just kind of masked over that. Again, really easy when the shot is at a consistent speed. These mouths suck and I hate them. They are slightly transposed and also I had to account for the fact that his finger was covering his mouth for some of them. He really does just have an awful face for lip flapping. Where originally this shot of Hestia had her mouth open the whole time, I went back and just kind of covered it up for the first bit. Thank fuck this wasn't a dialogue line. Uh, here is just one of the only face effects I actually bothered to do. And of course, it's a panning effect that I added after the fact. And we use these lip flaps that I showed you before. These lip flaps are transposed from a different scene entirely because she wasn't talking in this part. The lip flaps for Belle here are just transposed. These mouths for Hestia are transposed. Okay, let's talk about this walking up the stairs shot. As you can see from the timeline, it looks like, um fucking mess, doesn't it? Now, it might look like that, but it's actually a very specific... I promise I had a plan here. So, for starters, they have a 
inherent loop to their animation. So what I looked for in this case, and this is not like the only way to deal with this shot. There's like at least one better way I could have done this. But what I did for this shot is I basically found the loop. And because they're loops, they're also consistent in how long they are. And then I started looking at, okay, so for this loop, which ones are open, half, and closed frames? I basically separated them into those specific categories. So for this particular first loop, all of these are open mouths. All of these were half open mouths, and then this one was a closed mouth. And then I do this for all of the loops, and eventually you end up with a set of lip flaps that looks like this, where all of these are open mouths, all these are half open, and all these are closed. And yes, there are a few gaps, but you can fill those in just by taking one of these other frames and just shifting them slightly. And that gives you one loop. And then you mask just the mouth. It is one way of doing it. Probably not the best way. If I were to do it again, what I would probably do is I would first lip flap the shot normal, nest it or render it as a separate video, and then take that and manually line it up. For this shot of this cat girl, whose name I don't know, I had to transpose some of her lip flaps. For this shot in particular, I used a completely different shot for her lip flaps, as well as adjusted them for this shot here. I also transpose these lip flaps, and for her lip flaps, they are actually the cat girl again. For this shot of Belle talking, Hestia was also talking, so I had to account for that. And then basically for all the closed open and half open mouth frames, I just masked out a frame of them of Belle talking. And because it's panning at a consistent speed, I was able to just take the first point and the last point, applied the same pan to all the lip flaps, and then I just had to like manually cut them. Basically they were panning like this, and then I cut the ones that I actually needed. These lip flaps for Hestia are slightly transposed. For this shot of Belle, I added an open mouth. That mouth comes from this shot. For this shot of Belle running, obviously I had to do some motion syncing here, but uh, his mouth is actually Hestia's. You could say they were made for each other. All right, so for Cassandra's lip flaps here, they're actually made from two parts. The first part is actually her mouth, and then the second part is her lower lip thing that she has going on here. That is, of course, taken from the original shot. I employed the same tactic here, where I literally, again, took her mouth and added the puckered lip. This shot of Belle talking is actually from this shot, and this shot of Hestia talking is also from that shot. And then I also added this closed mouth from this shot. Now for this part here, only one of them was actually talking, so I just took the mouth from one, flipped it, put it on the other. Slightly transposed here. This lip flap of Belle is actually from Hestia. And then to wrap things up for his Firebolt attack, FIREBOLT! I went the extra little mile just to make sure that his mouth was actually matching the lip flaps. And then a fun little trick, if you ever have mouths that need to go under stuff, just mask that part separately. And that's it for my part of the breakdown. I hope you guys found it insightful. If I managed to impress you, please also look at my group's YouTube channel, the Funyurimpa Foundation. Currently, we've been uploading some Twitch highlights, anime highlights, and as well as some skits. Do you have a thing that can fuse with the strength that makes sun? What makes a sun with a strength? Nothing. Then no! <laughs> they took mostly tablets, laptops, and cameras. Sorry. Thank you both for the opportunity, the cheese platter, and please go eat a bag of dicks! No, oh, my cheese platter! Well, now we have to hire another new guild member. You know, I think it was for the best. I mean, did we really need another Barakas around here? Uh, hey, I'm here for the interview. Once we reach our 1,000 subscriber goal, however, we're planning to announce some new major projects, some of which may be some abridging projects, hmm? Yeah, I know this is a shameless plug, but this is how I'm getting paid for all the stuff I just showed you. Advertising. So please help us reach our 1,000 sub goals so we can start working on some major stuff. Hello, everyone. This is Ethan Grant, co-writer of Season 2 of How to Be an Adventurer, and wanted to help come on board uh, for the editing for Episode 10 and hopefully for some future episodes. I ended up doing Scene 2 and 5 for this episode. Uh, and I actually only have scene five here for premiere, so I've only got that to provide for uh, visual examples because I am currently in the middle of a move. Yara usually kind of sends us a baseline structure of what each scene entails, but without flaps, without uh, the visual edits all thrown in there, and then it's our job to just kind of, you know, go through that, twiddle it a little bit, and make sure that it all comes out as a product that you guys uh, no one love. But other than that, so he gives us the general scene structure and it kind of goes through there. So, of course, for this moving one, I kind of had to do a little bit of tracking on that one, but then use, thankfully, the basic mouth flaps that were already provided on this as it was. So then this shot usually is a panning shot of him kind of just looking at his suit and being all self-conscious. 
And so from this shot, he uh, is actually, or it's actually a panning shot of him kind of just looking at his suit and being all self-conscious. So what I did is I believe that right when it gets to about there, yep. So he's got uh, a little bit more of a surprise look because he sees Hestia come in. Uh, so what I did is I took the mid and the open flaps from this transition to be able to translate it into dialogue for when he is uh, looking self-conscious and translated that into a scene where it worked out that he would be talking in and his usual his usual little nervous mouth is what I used for the clothes one on that one. Other than that, every other flat for the most part up until I believe Hirano's first edit is just kind of the basics, which ends up being uh, quite flashy. And yes, here's Hirano's first edit, nice and hilarious, accentuates the uh, the tension and the amount of surprise that Bell has for how tacky everything is. And yeah, so scene two ended up not being the most visually intensive, uh, but then, and so this one was kind of already done for me. I think that Aaron just kind of had a little too much fun on it. Then Air, uh, then Hermes comes in uh, on this one. And so then for this one, originally I believe that mouth, uh, Bell's mouth is just kind of wide open, kind of agape, yeah. And uh, so I made sure to take this one from, I believe that this was a Hestia flat. Kind of just gave him a little bit more smug of a look while he's talking to Hermes, because you know how much our Bell just does not like Hermes. And here is the first uh, visual edit from my girlfriend, the very talented chef, Lena, who ended up providing a lot of custom flaps for all the scenes that I did, and we'll be able to see a lot more of those in scene five. But uh, Taki actually does not even really talk in any of the shots that he's got. And we'll be able to see that as it goes on a little bit as well. The talented chef Lane was able to provide, and for this one as well, just to make her look a little bit more annoyed with how Take is being a little selfish in this scene. And Hermes wraps his slimy arm around Take, to which Take does not like. So we had to make sure that we drew a couple more customs for him on this one, as there were none provided. Which then moves on to Apollo's speech. And let me tell you, this one was such a blast to write for. Not the most visually intensive, especially considering the fact that a lot of these just tend to be mouth flaps. Uh, like I said, probably the most fun on this scene was the writing portion for me. And then the last real edit that we have here is uh, the Take mouth right there, which I thought that with some color correction would add on to a nice little uh, Belle being worried kind of look. So this is where we are actually able to show a little bit more of the uh, visually intensive edit. See, it's going to be a custom flap uh, made by, of course, again, my lovely girlfriend, Chef Lena. And so for this scene, we kind of had a lot of... Uh, we, we kind of had a lot of the same mouth flap to be used because it really worked out. So usually in, in the original scene, Belle is not talking there. So if we kind of just, yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, no talking at all. If that's the exact same mouth, probably could have angled that a little bit, but I think it worked out just fine. Actually, I don't believe that Hayakinthos talks in this scene at all either. So we added in a lot, little bit of dialogue to spice it up, make sure that we get a good start to this one. Uh, because, yep, so it, I believe that this is actually just a panning shot of Hayakinthos, if I'm or, oops, not mistaken, but let me just double check that. Yep, nope, just a, just a painting shot of him. And then, yeah, so then he's, I believe, just saying, oh, it's that guy with this one. So basic flaps. And so some custom flaps to get him starting that one. And then, of course, Hayakinto's doing a nice little intimidating side smirk. And this is kind of on my art direction, because uh, I believe that somebody commented that it kind of looks like that he's having a stroke. Might not be the most efficient to talk like that. I felt like it would continue with his menacing aura that he's giving off with this, so I decided to keep that up. So what I ended up doing was I uh, color corrected the mouth there. So I made sure that he didn't have a mouth so it would be easier to kind of tack one on for a base. Because... Uh, before, I believe that, yeah, I think that that was the only mouth that he had had on there. So to make this a talking shot, uh, I got a couple of custom frames done, uh, a closed mouth and a, an open mouth to be able to kind of give the illusion that it was already there from the start. Otherwise, to cover up just the open mouth would have been a little bit of trouble. The skin saturation tone covered up his mouth and then made it into a... Uh, 
made it into a pallet from there. Basic flaps right here. Made sure to uh, move each one very, very slightly. This one, this one was kind of a little bit harder of one because I kind of had to put a little bit of a pinpoint this part of his face right here and just kind of track that. Some more minuscule movements for this one uh, to which we ended up figuring that this would be this would be a fine one to just kind of leave for the most part as is. So usually Hestia right here ends up yelling something so I figured that for this it'd probably be best that she just kind of keeps her mouth open as if she's gasping. Uh, and then end. <laughs> yeah, I guess that could have been a little bit more uh, graceful. But yeah, that will do it for my portion of this episode breakdown. And I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys enjoyed this and or the writing of this episode, I would implore you to check out my group's channel, Only Smiles. Currently, we have got a couple of different series. Some of the wonderful content that you can experience on that channel would be my teen romantic parody snafu, an Ori Gairu Abridged series where we are currently working on episode four and in the midst of production. We also have a Fate Apocrypha two-part miniseries titled The Adventures of Mordred, following the adventures of, well, Mordred, of course, as well as a couple of other secret projects that are in the pipeline that I cannot quite talk about yet, but be on the lookout because I may or may not be getting some writing help from our dearest Yaro Shien. Thank you guys so much for enjoying this episode, and I cannot wait to see you all in episode 11. Y'all take care now. That's a foot and a half, motherfucker! Say hello to Reaper. This is the program I would recommend getting off of Audacity. I am not going to get into this argument too soon, but just so you guys understand, this is from scene four of episode 10. And as you can see, it is a uh, <laughs> long boy. This being probably the longest scene I have ever edited, usually back in the day when I was editing like episodes, it would usually come out to about 10 minutes and each scene used to only be about a minute. But with the way things that we had written, especially for this episode, they ended up being a lot longer and much more, I would say, dialogue driven just as much as the comedy is there. The way that I usually do a lot of this stuff is that first I do a lot of the post processing such as like noise removal or if I need to balance something with EQ and then compression and then making sure everyone's audio is about the same level before I drop it into Vegas. This is not the longest process. I can probably bung one of these out in about two days should I have the attention span and the time. But generally speaking, these are generally what I would have to do before I put anything into Vegas. With there being about seven scenes in total, with the exception of cold opening just being called a cold opening, uh, you can kind of gather what's going on. Oh, uh, speaking of sound, I am going to just show you my sound effect layout. Uh... Okay, so one of the big things about me when it comes to sound effect design, and this is something that I've often heard in the abridging community on many different occasions, is that overproduced sound effects make it sound overproduced. Anytime anyone that ever says that, I tell them they are wrong, because when you make something sound good, you make it look just as good. Now, there is some slight belief that with older anime, that shouldn't be the thing that you're aiming for. You want to try and replicate the sounds that you've created, but in all reality, if you're going to be editing basically something that is up to date, and especially if you want to make sure sounds up to code, you put a lot of effort into your sound design. My work, especially in sound design, and I've been doing it for a long time, I've been doing it in animation in more specific areas, my ability to kind of just sit here and kind of work along the line is very very tedious and also on top of that one of the big things that i hate about sound effects are especially when it comes down to certain things much like i don't know walking look just realize that after last night's fiasco our day is in no way going unhindered yeah no i hate walking sound effects because it's mainly all timing it that's literally all that there is now, also, you may notice something going on a little bit here, and this is because a lot of the main audio is somewhere close to about negative eight decibels. This is mainly because I don't want to try and overexert what is going on up here. Should I actually bring everything up to level, I would find it to be quite 
bad. It would sound terrible in all reality. And to be quite honest, the best way in order to have a lot of headroom and make your project sound a lot better is once you have everything, you know, all the way to its max level and then everything else is balanced out compared to your main audio you just drag everything down about eight decibels and then you just work with a envelope which allows you to kind of tediously apply a volume effect so that way everyone sounds like that they're at a certain distance because that's what you want to try and achieve especially with audio design that's a foot and a half motherfucker this opening scene was made by Dai Tambadachi, who helped me create this dancing Hestia model, and then also subsequently made her dance, and then also I green screened it, added it into a nested shot, and then of course I had the two backgrounds and one on the foreground. So first and foremost, one of the big things that needed to happen was this by Runaway Tourist, who basically redrew this whole lip flap and then also allowed me to use Belle's lip flap in order for Belle to talk, especially while he is choking. Uh, once again, Hirano had done the uh, little redraw here just for the mouth. I wanted to make sure it was as realistic as possible. Hirano really does more comedic stuff when it is very much demanding, and we'll get to that in about a second. This was an animation by Runaway Tourist, especially with the hand slapping the letter out of uh, out of Daphne's hand. And then also, this whole face was completely redrawn, given a flat face, lip flaps, and then also the eye bags, the eyelashes, as well as just the eyes in of themselves. I used a program called Vegasaur, which allows me to add a camera shake, which I applied to the eyeballs specifically, so that way they look like they're kind of just shaking and moving for a little added extra effect. It was really awesome to add that kind of stuff. And as you can see here, that's where the Vegasaur had done its work. It's an awesome plugin. This letter was redrawn by Runaway Tourist. These lip flaps of Hestia and Belle were drawn by Hirano, and they really accentuate the anger between the two, especially over a situation that they had just discussed and Belle breaking that promise almost immediately. So at the end of episode 10, if you see the cast card, I accidentally forgot to cast uh, Red as a tomato for her role as Osfi. She only had one line, and I really do apologize for that, but she was really awesome. And also, it was really funny to do this again. So once again, this was drawn by Hirano. I asked for the eyeball. I added some of that eye shake for the little effect. I really cannot stop doing that, and I hope to do it more in the future. And these lip flaps were implanted by me. Ethan. Okay, so inner eyes is a little bit more changed up from the original edit that I had done for How to Be in a Mage. I had basically just used a crossfade effect and also some color correction effects, so that way I could just overlay it and then allowed it to crossfade wherever I needed to so that way when the crossfade happens you can actually visually see who is talking inside of Eyes' mind at that moment before it just leads back to Eyes herself. The flash was an intended edit. Sorry quiz. These lip flaps were redrawn by here now. The song that plays here when Hestia and Bella are dancing are called Graceful Day by Sonova. I really, really like Sonova's music. Please do go check them out. I don't think they get enough love that they do deserve. The music that plays throughout this scene is from the Saw movies. It is Zep. Just villainous song that I think really fit the moment. These two cat boys are played by Joe Cat, which is the one with the dark hair, and Nux Taco, the one with the brown hair, respectively. Joe Cat had messaged me to see if the, these two characters could actually end up having a longer chat, but believe it or not, we had written them to actually have longer chats in general and they will be coming back in episode 11 and hopefully episode 12 for anyone who keeps asking me about what is said behind the whole thing with bell and hestia arguing over the size of his schlong and who keeps talking this is what haven aiden who played daphine said that's a foot and a half motherfucker some of the sounds when it comes to characters were actually recorded post actual recording. Basically, I had recorded all of my lines, Tara had recorded all of her lines, but I specifically wanted certain mouth sounds and also certain sounds to be heard while they were being attacked or hurt. Believe it or not, this actually made the episode sound a lot more professional. And of course, the ending song was Believer by Imagine Dragons. If you may have noticed that I'm trying to move away from the old ska tunes that I used to play at the end of these episodes, 
more and more I have grown to kind of appreciate certain music and also I kind of want to expand it on the idea and the feeling of having nice big hitting endings for songs and you know Believer was just just perfect for this moment. This is from a vine I don't remember when but probably 2015. You dare speak to me in that tone of voice boy? These are the patrons that support the show. As an overall whenever it comes down to editing how to be an adventurer especially when it comes to uh, this whole project I have a lot of difficulty in being able to spend time where I need to. I basically lay out all the audio, lay out all the video, so that way I can send it off to somebody like Quiz or Ethan in order for them to kind of lip flap. This gives me a lot of personal time in order to work on sound effects. This also allows me to kind of ask artists who be willing to help me do some custom lip flapping or if I need to get certain animation details done. One of, That's just one of the really big things about making this show. It takes forever because of a lot of people that I work with and a lot of the time that I have to put into in order to assure that the entirety of the video turns out well. One of the big problems when it comes to editing how to be an adventurer is the editing and that's all. Lip flapping is one of the most tedious and unbelievably mind-numbing problems when it comes to abridging in general and I really do wish people would appreciate that aspect more when you look at a lot of these edits. I cannot stress enough about how much time goes into writing, directing, and editing. And that's really where that chain of good sound and good video editing comes from. Thank you all so much for watching this video and hopefully I hope you guys enjoyed what Ethan and Quiz also had to bring to the table when it came to editing their ends for How to Be an Adventurer. I cannot thank them enough and I cannot thank you all enough for making these videos possible. That being said, thank you all so very much for watching, and hopefully we hope to see you in the next video. Later.